Um, hello, everyone. Today we're going to be uh, continuing off of last week's lesson. So just to recap, last lesson we were introduced to polynomials and we learned how to factor and expand the expressions. Um, we also did a few questions on factoring trinomials, which we'll talk more about today. So if you were a bit confused about that last class, it's okay. Um, those questions were meant to be an intro into this lesson. So as promised, today we're going to be continuing on factoring. We're going to first take a look at what factoring looks like visually, then we're going to go into more depth on factoring trinomials, which we learned, which is uh, what we learned last week, or more like the examples I did last week that you may have not understood because I didn't teach it. But um, yeah, we're going to go over that. Then also we're learning about a special type of polynomial that's called a difference of squares. Okay, so I want to first show you guys a YouTube video because usually in a classroom setting, your teacher would give you some algebra tiles to work with. Um, you would play around with the different tiles to represent different equations and like make different expressions. But since we're online, we can't do this. So I've resorted to the second best option, which is showing you all a video of someone else doing it. Yeah, I want to use a rainbow pen because I just discovered the existence of one today. I want to use it. Um, so we're going to start off by factoring trinomials by inspection. Um, in school, uh, students are given lots of binomials to expand in order to kind of discover a pattern. But because this is a condensed course, I'm just going to show you the pattern. Um, so when kids do a bunch of binomials, over time, they're going to start to realize that this middle value adds up, right? And this n value is the sum of these two. So I'm just going to show you. Um, over here, we see that 2 becomes one of the middle values. And 4 becomes one of the other. Oh, wait, that's pointing at the wrong numbers. Um, it, so the two, um, the two constant terms become one of the middle values with the x and the end constant term is becomes the product of those two binomial constant terms so basically if we use this example so last week i taught you all about foil which is kind of like a strategy for multiplying out um, binomials so according to foil which i'll write at the top um, FOIL, so the first letter it says is F, right? And F stands for first. So first means multiplying the first terms of these two binomials, which is in this case X. So X times X is X squared. And then O stands for outside. So the X and the three, these two. We're gonna then multiply these two together. Three times X becomes three X. And then I stands for inside, so then we multiply the insides, 3 and x, which also become 3x. And then L stands for last, which is the two last terms in, this, in these binomials. So 3 and 3, we multiply them, become 9. Once we add up these two um, middle terms, because we have to simplify it, we get x squared plus 6x plus 9. So if you'll notice from the top value or the top expression and the expression that we just solved now, um, the middle value in both of these are basically the P and Q values. So if we did this, um, if we did this expression, um, then the P and Q values, once they added up, would become the middle term, which we'll call B. And if we multiply them, it will become the M term, which will become C. I'm going to write it down here. B is equal to P plus Q, and C is equal to P times Q. Is this rainbow pen hard to see? Um, I'm worried the yellow is. Yeah, I'll, I guess I'll switch. Um, okay. Okay, purple against the purple background. That's a bad idea. <laughs> um, okay. So B is P plus Q and C is P times Q. So now let's kind of uh, use this newfound pattern 
to easily simplify our expressions. Um, so basically, to sum it all up, um, if we want to factor x squared plus bx plus c, where b and c are some random integers, by inspection, we need to find two integers that have a product that is equal to c and a sum that's equal to b. Um, if there are no integers, then the polynomial can't be factored. So to factor x squared plus 8x plus 12, we need to find two integers that multiply 2 to get the c value, which in this case is 12, and add to get the b value, which in this case is 8. Um, there are a lot more examples in the workbook, so if you aren't confident after this lesson or you want to do more practice, then you can always refer to the workbook. Okay, so we're going to kind of look at some more patterns in factoring. So please note that if the product, um, so, so the C value in this case, if the product is positive, then the two integers will either be both positive or both negative. Because um, if you remember from, I think this is grade seven math, um, if you have a positive times a positive, the result will always be a positive. Or if you have a negative and a negative, the result will once again, always be positive. Um, but if the product is negative, then you know that one integer is positive and the other integer is negative because a negative times a positive, it's always a negative. Okay, so that's it for um, factoring trinomials by inspection. If we have time at the end of class, we're going to do a bit more. Um, but let's kind of take a look at difference of squares for now. So a difference of squares, <laughs> it's basically like a fancy name for trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c, where b is equal to zero. So this middle value is just canceled out. b is just bleh, won't be here. Um, and c is a negative square number. Note that it says negative because you can't have a positive difference of squares. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. So some examples um, would include x squared minus 25. So 25 is a, is a negative square, right? It's the square of 5. And 100 is the square of 10. So these both are um, difference of squares. And we're going to learn how to factor them in the next slide. Or um, practice factoring them. So to factor a difference of squares, you have to remember that um, a squared plus b squared. So in this case, a is x. So x squared plus minus b squared. Sorry, did I say plus earlier? Um, is always equal to a plus b and times a minus b. So one of the one of the um, binomials will have the plus uh, positive b and one of the binomials will have a negative b. So in the case of x squared minus 16, how do we know that this is a difference of squares? Well, it's pretty simple. We just have to look at the last term. Um, is it a negative? Yes. And is it a square? Yes, it's the square of 4. So what we're going to do is we know that it's going to eventually turn out in this format, right? So let's just draw it out first. It's going to be a squared plus b, or a plus b, and a minus b. But what's going to go into these blanks? Well, for the a value, it's pretty obvious. It's just x squared, um, square root of x squared is um, x. So we just put x in both of these. And then um, for 16, we just take the square root of 16, which is 4. And that's it. We've just factored our first difference of squares. Um, to double check your answer, you can also re, um, re expand it by you know using FOIL first, outside, inside, last. So let's try it and see if we got did this correctly. Um, the first is x times x, which is just x squared. The outside is x times negative four, which is negative four x. Inside is positive 4 times x, which is positive 4x. And the last is positive 4 times negative 4, which is negative 16. Now, this might not initially look like the beginning value, but you have to remember that we have to simplify everything first. So that means we have to simplify this. Um, and negative 4x times, or negative 4x plus 4x is always 0. So this just cancels out. 
which leaves x squared minus 16. And this is what we got originally. So yeah, that's also why that the, um, the negative or the constant has to always be negative because if it was positive, like let's say we had, okay, I'm gonna pull up and kind of erase this. Let's say we had, um, x plus 4 times x plus 4. So what's going to happen here? Well, let's multiply it out. So we'll have x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16. Now these two values, because both of them are positive, they won't cancel out. These, these two values will add up to become 8x, which is no longer our difference of squares. So it's not in this format anymore. Um, there is a middle term. So that's why positive values don't work. Okay. So let's try visualizing some differences of squares. So let's say that we have x squared minus nine. So in the diagram over here, it's very bad arrow, oops. In the diagram over here, we have a perfect square. Um, it's the value of a times the value of a with the tiny value of b that's removed, that's been removed. Um, so these are both squares. So we had an originally an a, which is x. So this gray area is x squared. And then we removed b, b squared from it. So let's say for the sake of um, example, that b is three, b squared is nine. So we subtract nine units squared from a. Um, do we know what the side length is? Yes, um, the square root of nine is three. So b, which is the side length is equal to three. Now, um, this is kind of, it's kind of showing you like you you have x squared, which is the gray area. You take out nine, you take out nine squared, um, nine units squared, I should say. And then what you're left with here is kind of an awkward looking shape with a tiny square taken out of it, right? But if we cut out a rectangle from here, then we rotate it and put it beside the x squared, we get a perfect rectangle, which shows that. Um, this can be factored. You should always remember that whenever, um, if we are playing with algebra tiles, whenever the algebra tiles can be put into a perfect rectangle, that expression that the algebra tiles made can be factored. But if it's some weird shape like this with a missing area over here or something, then this cannot be factored, can't be factored. Turd. My bad writing. All right. Okay, so that's basically kind of what a difference of square looked like if you represented it with algebra tiles. Okay, now we have some more examples with difference of squares. Um, so in a squared minus b squared is equal to x plus 3 times x plus, this is a typo, x plus a minus x so these were, you may spot quite a few typos in my slides. Um, if you do, please let me know. I will correct them right away. Okay, so um, in x squared plus minus b squared, we can replace a and b with numbers, variables, monomials, and even polynomials. So, okay, I guess I kind of shouldn't have replaced this with x. Let's stick with a for now. So these a and b are both variables. We can replace them with whatever you want. Um, we can replace these values with whatever we want. Like we can replace a and b with 
polynomials even. Um, for example, if we if we look over here, four x squared minus twenty five can be written as twenty five x squared minus five squared. Um, do you know what was done here? So basically, the four x squared was factored. Oh. Yes, okay, so we've taken out the square out of both of these numbers, right? So if we take out the square of four, we're left with two. And if we take out the square of x, we're left with x. But we still have to keep the square on so we don't change the value. And then we take out, if we take out the square of 25, we get five. We once again, still have to keep the square so we don't change the value. Um, so in this case, a is actually equal to 2x, which is kind of weird because you wouldn't normally think that variables can be replaced by more variables, but surprise, it can. Um, so in this case, how can we factor this value or this expression? Well, if we just literally factored this, then we just have to take out the square and leave this here. Um, we know that this is in the in the form of difference of squares, so we can just automatically place in the positive and negative signs. And we're left with this. All right. And that is all for today. Um, it was a relatively quick lesson, only half an hour. So I guess that means we have some more time for um, finishing the video and doing word problems. All right, yeah, that's it for today. Um, continue with, uh, we're gonna continue with polynomials. For last part of polynomials, it's a long unit, I know, but we're gonna talk about um, special polynomials. So there are some polynomials that don't fit into a difference of squares category or a trinomial, or they are a trinomial, but they can be factored in a very special way. Um, yeah, looking forward to see you guys, seeing you guys all next week. I will stop recording now.